Smoke billowing out of the fire. We had water falling from the ceiling. What else could go wrong? Good morning, friends and family. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Ashlyn and I had a good Christmas, but boy, was it a crazy week. Hey guys. Hey there. Hey guys. Hey guys. We are finally thawing out here. Man, that cold was pretty miserable. Look at all that ice. It just kept building and building. Oh, I'm so glad that it's warming up now. That was not very fun. I'm sure the animals weren't too happy about it either, but we all survived. We didn't lose anybody, nobody froze. Cows are happy. They're all outside now, now that it's all sunny. Chickens are doing great. Even more ice. Yesterday I was finally able to water the animals again. We had stored up tons of water so we didn't have any issues with that, but hey buddy. But uh, yesterday I was finally able to refill all the waters and so everybody's nice and happy. We're supposed to get up to 50 degrees today so that'll be so nice. That was a pretty tough week for us. You know, moving, moving across the country is really tough and it's not easy when it's just the two of you, but thankfully we have each other. It was a little scary. So the first night, which was Friday, so that was the 23rd, that was the night that it got to negative seven degrees. And, and I woke up at about 12 o'clock and Thankfully, thank God I woke up because I could smell smoke and the wind from that storm, because it was 40, 40, 50 mile an hour winds and the wind from that storm was blowing in so, so hard that it was actually back drafting our wood stove, which we were using to heat because we have a ductless heat system, but those things don't do anything at those temperatures. They're, they're blowing hardly any uh, hot air. So we just turned them off and we were just using the wood stove to heat the house. And so the, the, the wind was coming in and it was back drafting and blowing tons of smoke in the house. And I'm so glad I woke up because that could have been really ugly. We could have, we could have I mean, you, you, that's when you can die. I mean, if you, if you inhale enough smoke in your sleep, I mean, there's tons of stories about people dying from that. So I'm so glad we woke up to that. And uh, instantly, I realized we weren't gonna be able to fix this. So I got all of the coals, all of the hot pieces of wood into a bucket and I just went and dumped it outside. And we, <laughs> in negative seven degrees, opened up all the windows in the house. So that way we had some oxygen to breathe instead of all that smoke. So uh, that was miserable. Thankfully, we didn't lose power. And so we had some space here. So we just closed the bedroom door and just, turned on the space heaters and that's how we slept that first night it was it was pretty brutal and it was about 45 degrees in the house when we woke up in the living room so thankfully we did order a wind resistant uh chimney cap so that way when it does get windy like this again it's not gonna backdraft into the house like that uh yeah that was that was real scary that was that was stressing me out not because it was so cold and we were gonna have to worry about that, but just because if, if I hadn't woken up, like we, we could have, the whole house could have been filled with smoke and you know, we could have just not woken up. So uh, very thankful that we jumped on it and we solved the problem and very thankful that the winds died down for the rest of the cold front because 
We were able to use the wood stove again. I washed it very meticulously to make sure that we didn't have smoke coming into the house. And you know, as it warmed up, we were able to turn our ductless heat systems back on and everything is golden as far as the wood stove goes. Hopefully that chimney cap comes in soon and I'll throw that on. So next time we have 50 mile an hour winds, which will happen, especially in, in the springtime, we won't have that problem. Hey guys. What are you doing, Oak? I think these guys need some hay. Here you go. Here you go, guys. I have not been very happy with this batch of hay that we picked up. It's like half of it is, is just all stems and it's just it's not very good quality hey we paid a lot of money for it and it's all organic and everything and yeah i messaged the guy he said he's trying to he's trying to improve his fields but i don't know it is what it is i probably should have looked at it a little closer when i bought it but they'll eat all the good stuff and all the stems and everything we'll go give it to the pigs so at least it doesn't go to waste our Angus bull calf, this guy right here, you can barely see him because Rosie's <laughs> eating all the hay, but she, uh, or he, he's no longer on the bottle anymore, which is super nice. It's nice to see him grow up and he's all eating hay now. He still whines a little bit in the morning because it's only been, you know, four or five days since his last bottle, but we have a little bit of change of plans on the farm, so. Uh, obviously Rosie's gonna be our milk cow. She's supposed to be giving birth here uh, early next year. Uh, long term for Buddy, which is our Angus bull, we're gonna use him for breeding. Uh, some family friends that I talked to said that the Angus bulls are actually a little bit more friendly than the Jersey bulls. So I think uh, I was talking to my neighbor and he said that we still can uh, make him into a steer. Uh, the Jersey Bull, so I think we're going to do that. We'll probably raise him up for beef this year. Um, and then Maple in the back there, uh, she is A2, so we're going to keep her and we're going to use her for milk as well. Obviously, between the two of them, that's going to be a lot of milk, but I think we're going to cycle them, so I think we're going to have it. So Rosie gives us milk for a good part of the year, and then Maple will give us milk for a good part of the year, so that way we don't really have a downtime. Then Buddy we'll use him to breed them back. I like you, I, I like the idea of using a bull a lot more than I do AI. Uh, I know AI is pretty good nowadays, but I just, this way it's more natural. It just, I like being able to control it. And it's, and honestly, it seems easier to just throw the bull in with the cows instead of having to figure out when they're in heat and then calling somebody to do the AI. So that's kind of an updated plan with our cattle. Um, when we got these two, the you know, Oak and Maple, they're half brother and sister, and we weren't too sure what we were gonna do with them. We knew we needed to separate them, so it's kind of a win-win. Uh, they'll get to stay together, and then we'll raise Oak up for meat and uh, supply our house with beef for the next year. And more ice. What a week, so we solved the stove problem. Well, we haven't solved it, but we ordered the pieces to fix it, so that's good. And then two days ago, started my truck up, loaded the trailer onto the back and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to check my fluids because I do that every so often and open the hood. And there it was. There was oil sitting in my coolant. And yeah, if you know anything about cars, that's a big no. That's a big problem. You do not want to drive your car if you have any fluids mixing. So I turned the truck off and told Ashlyn, hey, we're gonna have to wait on more sheetrock. I gotta get this thing into the shop over at the house and start ripping it apart and figuring out what's going on. So that was a big bummer. And it's never fun having things happen like that in the cold, right around the holidays. And to top it off, I was sick the entire time. So I'm, I'm still a little bit stuffy, but I'm getting better. And so took the truck up to the shop. Got under, you know, got under the hood, got underneath it and checked for leaks or anything. I couldn't find anything. So 
finally figured out that it was probably my oil cooler. I think what happened was this cold weather, some of the gaskets, there was imperfections in them and they shrunk a little bit with the cold weather. And when I went to go start it on the very cold day, I'm guessing oil mixed with the coolant. So I decided to take all that off, flushed everything, replaced the gaskets, put it all together. And so far so good. So hopefully, we don't have any more problems there. I got done working on my truck. I walked back inside to warm up a little bit and there was water on the floor and then I saw it was dripping onto my desk and then I looked up and the water was just running down the ceiling or running down the wall there from the ceiling. And thankfully I'm a plumber, I know what to do. Instantly turn off the water, got a bunch of towels, tried to soak it up. I wasn't too worried about the sheetrock or the walls or anything. Um, because it had just started leaking and I knew that if I dried it out, it wouldn't be a problem. But my main focus was the flooring. We had just floored the downstairs. And if you know anything about laminate flooring and water, well, it'll seep up in the joints. And so I put tons of towels and blankets and anything I could find to seep it up. And then I went upstairs and I started ripping the floorboards up. And thankfully we hadn't floored up there yet. So it's still under construction upstairs. and. So I ripped all the floorboards up and started to mop up upstairs in the floor joists and everything. And the tiny, tiny bit of copper that we had in our house, we have pecs throughout the entire house, but that tiny bit of copper, which was just a stub out for our angle stop, for our shutoff underneath our sink, that burst under the cold, it must've froze and then it burst. And once it started thawing out, started spraying hot water all over the place. So. Got it all fixed, fixed the problem. I had insulated a, upstairs before the cold, but I don't think it was enough. I tried insulating around the pipe. We aren't heating upstairs right now because most of upstairs is not insulated. It looks a lot like it does in here. So, um, so I fixed that problem, got everything mopped up. Sadly, our flooring did bow up a little bit in a few spots. I don't think we're gonna worry too much about it. It's just a couple of joints. I think we bought cheap laminate flooring knowing that we were probably going to replace it in a few years anyway. So I think we're just going to leave it for now. Thankfully, sheetrock dried out, uh, no issues there. Yeah, that was, a, that was a real tough week. Sometimes you win some and sometimes you lose some, but on a good note, I'm very happy that all of the animals did great. Everybody stayed nice and warm. None of the chickens died, which I'm so thankful for. That's what I was most worried about was the chickens. I knew the cattle could work, could you know weather the storm. I knew the pigs could weather the storm. They had tons of bedding, but the chickens wasn't too sure about. They're usually the weak weak link in a farm. So, but everybody did great. I think they all huddled up together and so glad this storm's over. Happy that it's sunny. Happy that it's 50 degrees now. And geez, what a time. You can see we had a big wood pile here. We went through most of it, so I'm gonna go get the tractor and start piling up another load of wood. got a good amount of wood stacked up over here that should probably last us two three weeks I would say yeah it was a pretty tough week for us but we had a good Christmas at least nothing bad happened on Christmas which is a good thing but um, you know these these hard times definitely uh, make you appreciate the good ones that's for sure so everything's fixed everything's okay we're happy and healthy and uh, got it all taken care of so Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.